Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be letting AI take over the world. Okay, Terminator jokes aside, this video will be taking you through how to implement an AI into Home Assistant. Basically, think a text-based version of Amazon or Google, but all running locally via the magic of AI through Phi, that is a Microsoft development with a large language model from Hugging Face. Now, before we dive on into the how, a word of caution. AI runs on server farms with banks of graphics card, each with thousands of tensor cores, or dedicated AI cards made by NVIDIA called the H-Series. Most of us were running Home Assistant on a low power machine, running with a few watts of power and without a dedicated GPU loaded with tensor cores. So please don't expect blazing performance. However, the technology is improving every day and that AI is on a rocket ride to bringing costs down, improving performance, and ultimately becoming less power hungry and optimized for smaller systems. More on that later. But if you're running your home assistant on a VM or a desktop, then connect it to a powerful GPU or an AI accelerator, which is where you get the best performance, then this is a great option for you. Now, if you want to dive fully into AI in Home Assistant, then I'd suggest watching Tech Enthusiast, who has an excellent series of videos and goes into a lot more detail. I'll put some links to other interesting articles for recent developments in this area. I'm particularly interested in the TensorFlow Lite, links in the description, which is an AI-specific design for microcontrollers. If this ever eventuates, then quick AI on Pies might become a reality. Either way, it's a fun project to install and see what can be achieved right now. So assuming that you're not on the run from a T1000, let's dive on in. First off, we'll be installing the text generation UI. There are multiple versions of this, but our first option will be to add this as an add-on. This is the version you'll use if you're running it on device, such as a Raspberry Pi. It's a good place to start and maybe migrate to remote instances later on and utilize a more powerful machine that might have a graphics card. To install, press the link in the description to add the text generation web UI. Verify that the URL is correct and update is required as I have done. Press the open link. Now press install. As you can see from the note on the add-on, this may or may not work on a Raspberry Pi. In my testing, this did work on a Pi, but was very, very slow. Yes, that is very, very slow. Even the installation of the add-on took 25 minutes. Your mileage may vary. Now press start. Make sure the add-on is up and running by the green dot in the top right hand corner. Now let's configure the text generator. Press the open web UI. The AI will seem to respond, but it does not have a large language model to work from at this time and will error if you try and ask it a question. Suitable large language models are available from Hugging Face, links in the description, but we can download a suitable model directly from the add-on. Navigate to Models. In the right-hand side under Download Model or LoRa, paste in Acon 96 slash Home 3B V2 GGUF. I'll put this in the description. Now press Get File List. The add-on will bring back a list of models that can now be selected. The models range in size and complexity from the small Q2 model through to the larger and more complex Q8 model. Basically, the larger the model, the more accurate it will be, but the slower it will be to respond. Balance this with the size of the model, your available system RAM and your graphics card RAM. In my case, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and no graphics card. As such, I allocated eight gigabytes of RAM to the VM and used the Q4 model. I recommend starting conservatively and increasing the model that will fit your machine size. Copy the desired model into the model field and press download. This might take some time. Now press reload. Using the drop down in the model, you should now see your available large language model. Select it. Now press load. Once the model has successfully downloaded, you will see a notification for this on the right hand side. You can now navigate to the chat menu and type in a command, such as how are you today? and the AI will respond. Alternatively, you can go to the IP address colon 7860. This will give you direct access into the text generator UI. Our next installation option will be to install the text generator UI on potentially a standalone machine that we can link through to Home Assistant. 
Currently this allows for installation on operating systems such as Windows and Mac etc. This installation process will allow you to use the power of the alternative machine that might have a graphics card or an AI accelerator and feed this back into Home Assistant. To start the installation, go to the GitHub page for the Text Generator UI, links in the description. Press the green code button, followed by the download zip. Press the Save As button and save to your downloads directory and press save. Navigate to your downloads directory. Right click, extract all and press the extract button. Once extracted, navigate into the main folder. Navigate down to the CMD flags. Right click, open with notepad. On the last line, remove the hash and press file and save and close the notepad. Scroll down to the file that says start windows. Right click, run as administrator. If you see Windows protected your PC, plus more information, press Run anyway. If a user access control pops up, then simply accept it. The installation will ask you if you have a GPU. Select the appropriate model. This is going to take quite some time to install. Now is the time to go off and get that next cup of coffee. If in the installation process you see a message that's asking about Python, press Allow. When it's completed, open up a browser and go to localhost colon 7860. Now we're back to our usual chat screen. We still don't have a large language model attached. Now repeat the process that we defined before. Once downloaded, press the refresh button. Use the drop-down on the model, select your model, and press load. Once the model has been successfully loaded, move across back into your chat. Now you can test it out by asking it a question, and press generate. The AI will now respond accordingly, but much quicker than it did before because it's now running on a much more powerful system. The next part of this puzzle is to link your Home Assistant to the AI. For this, we'll be using a Hacks integration called the Llama Conversation. As this is a Hacks installation, you'll need Hacks installed. If you don't have Hacks installed, go to the pop-out above or the link in the description below. Once you have Hacks installed, press the link in the description for the Llama Conversation. Verify and modify that your URL to your Home Assistant instance is correct and press open link. Confirm the addition of the custom repository and press add. Now press download. Now confirm the download of the Llama conversation by pressing download. Now we'll need to restart Home Assistant. Head to developer tools, check your configuration, press the restart button, followed by confirming restart Home Assistant and confirm again with restart. Now we'll need to add the corresponding Llama conversation integration. Head to Settings, Integrations, Add Integration, Search for Llama. Select Llama Conversation. Now we need to select which backend we're going to be using for our AI model. Press the drop down and select Text Generation Web UI API and press Submit. Now type in your AP host name. This will be the IP address of where the Text Generation UI is actually running. If you're running the add on alone, then leave this as the default. Next is the model name. Navigate back to your local host 7860 and copy the AI model name. Copy this into the model name of the Llama conversation and press submit. Now press finish. Now to use the AI, we'll need to make some modifications to the voice assistant. Navigate to settings, voice assistant. We're going to add a new assistant, give it a name. Inside the conversation agent, Drop the LL model and press create. Optional at this point, you can change this to a favorite and this will become the default. Press update. The AI will only be able to control entities that are exposed to it. Press the expose button on the top menu. It will list off all of the entities that are currently exposed. You can remove entities by pressing the X next to the entity name or you can expose new entities. I've duplicated the screen for demonstration purposes. Press the assist button. Make sure that your AI has been selected in the dropdown. Now let's control the lights in the lounge and press send text. On the right hand side, you can now see that the lounge lights have turned on. This took approximately 10 seconds to action the request. Now let's turn the lights off. And again, the lights have now turned off. Again, roughly around about 10 seconds to action the request. The model is able to control multiple devices at the same time. Also, the model only supports fans, lights, switches, covers, and locks at this point in time. But there is a promise that this will be expanded shortly. 
If you wish to enhance the AI to your specific Home Assistant instance with your devices, then check the Llama conversation documentation. Here it takes you through some examples of the syntax of the commands you'll need to change. We've only scratched the surface of the capabilities of the AI within Home Assistant. With a basic installation for an add-on specific and a remote AI instance, with either linked into your Home Assistant. This was intentional as I wanted to give you a taste of what is to come, but not dive into extensive tuning of AI. After all, this is supposed to be AI and not a configuration with specific user cases. AI is only at the start of its journey with Home Assistant. The minimum hardware requirements will reduce dramatically. The complexity of the commands understood will increase exponentially and I'm sure the Home Assistant team are contemplating including this as a feature and not as an add-on. Fingers crossed for 2024. I hope you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video and don't forget to ding that bell to be notified of similar content. Hopefully your robot vac won't take over your Home Assistant and we'll see you on the next video.